Hey, everybody. Hey, listen, man. Today, we're finally releasing on time. Pumped. Um, okay, guys. Uh, here we go. If you are new to the show, welcome. Glad you found us. What we do on this show, we talk with top producing real estate agents. But hey, look, if you don't sell real estate, not a problem. The stuff that we talk about and all this stuff will and can and does apply to pretty much every other business. Um, you know, uh, whether you're a, a, a pie maker, plumber, painter, the stuff that we talk about can help you. All right, today's episode. This guy is a good guy. Um, he's a serial entrepreneur. Um, he's, he's done it. He's had restaurants. He's had financial service companies, blah, whatever, whatever. His latest thing is real estate. And I got to tell you, this guy just finished up his sixth year in business and finished it off with 442 transactions, 450 deals, sixth year in business. So if you guys are out there and you've been, you know, struggling for two, three, four years, look, this can be done. And, and I, what I will tell you, you know, just kind of as a, as a primer for this content is, you know, how he started, you know, he says in, this, in the episode, he goes, look, I'm a, I'm an old school guy. He's like, I, you know, you can go buy the latest internet widget or do whatever, but nothing beats personal relationships. You know, he's like, if I get a meeting with that person, I'm going to take that business. So. Again, some of you guys are out there going, oh, man, my runway is drying up. I only have another two months of, of expenses. You know, I just want you to listen to this guy. And you, you don't need a big marketing budget um, initially to go out and have some good success. Okay, so here's what we talk about. Um, we talk, you know, one, one big takeaway that, that we hit on early on, and it is very thematic of all these top producers that, that I meet with, is that he started his real estate business as a business. And I think that's where a lot of people make, make their mistakes. They start, they're just selling houses instead of treating it like a business. You know, whether that's time blocking or, or you know, there's a lot of things, with, you know, and a lot of it, guys, comes down to implementing systems and processes. That's the, the only way you're gonna get to 442 transactions, system process. And look, and to be honest with you, you know, with, with, uh, with the stuff that we have going on, the only way this, is, this episode's coming out on time is systems and processes. Okay, so that's a big takeaway, biz like a biz. Um, now, I gotta tell ya, um, I'm releasing this August 2015. I recorded it in November 2014. Um, I'm just, uh, we have a lot of content on the books here, guys. So that's okay. Even though it's a little bit old, the, the content isn't old. And I can tell you just kind of an updated thing. Today's guest, uh, when we recorded, he was in Portland. And since then, he has launched expansion teams in Seattle. And he's launching a brand new office here in San Diego, where I'm at. And, and consequently, He's also doing radio with us. So we're going to start, we're going to help him build his business on radio here in San Diego. So that's what I, I want to just tell you that up front, uh, because maybe you are here in San Diego. You want to work with a top guy like this guy. And, and this guy's a good guy. Okay. Um, so, you know, and, and what we talk about, you know, he started his business in 2008, the worst year ever to start a real estate business, but he started in 2008. Um, and we talk about what he did in that market as people were washing out of real estate. Uh, we also talk about, um, you know, how to create a, a business that wins, that produces, regardless of of outside economic um, um, conditions. And I think that again, that's I think it's important to you guys. Um, bop, bop, bop. The, and another takeaway: again, it doesn't cost any money; it takes a little effort. You know, why leveling up and modeling top producers in your market, in the nation, whatever, from listening on the show, model folks, figure out what's working for them. Um, and, and take bits and pieces and make it your own. Okay, um, here we go. Let's get into the intro music, and then uh, we'll do a little housekeeping. Welcome to Super Agents Live. This is the one place where you can come and hear the most successful people in real estate. You'll hear how these super agents built their businesses, how they stay productive, and how they stay motivated. Who am I? My name's Toby Salgado, and I made my first million in real estate. Yeah. And I'm your host for the next 30 minutes while we talk to yet another amazing real estate yeah. entrepreneur. Stay tuned. Let's go. Yeah. yeah. All right, quick housekeeping. We always do this. Look, 
We have a very strong Twitter following. Uh, my handle is at Super Agents Live. This show's hashtag is hashtag unpack that idea. Um, that's a big follow train. I encourage everybody to use that hashtag. I'll follow you. I encourage everybody else in our community to follow one another and, uh, you know, build a little tribe out there. We kind of have that. Um, as usual, this episode, this show is brought to you by Real Estate Radio Experts. Speaking of leveling up, listings are hard to find. Radio, radio guys, it works. It works crazy good. If you want listing leads, if you want sellers to come and say, come list my house, it's being on radio. And look, it's not as expensive as you think. So you can either go to the site, superagentslive.com or realestateradioexperts.com and fill out the getting started sheet to show me, share with me a little bit about what you're doing today, what your biz looks like. And we'll see, uh, we'll see if uh, we're a good fit. I mean, look, I mean, we're, we, you know, we're not a good fit for everybody. Um, last piece, you're not going to want to miss future upcoming episodes. So I have go to superagentslive.com and I'm going to I'm going to warn you guys or I'm going to I'm going to tell you up front. You know, we've recently list building is a big deal. You guys should be building your database. Um, light boxes or pop up boxes. They work. Everybody hates them, but they work. So you're going to go to superagentslive.com and you're going to get a pop up box. So fill it out and, uh, you know, download and you join the community, download my ebook. And, uh, and, and uh, I'll let you, I'll share with you stuff on our list that I don't share in the share. All right, that's it. Let's get to the content. Aaron Ryan. Today on the show, uh, I'm pretty excited about this guy. Uh, our guest today has a team of 21. He's in Portland, Oregon. So his average sales price is about 230. This year, he will do his sixth year in the business. He will do 448 transactions. Unbelievable for a total volume of about 141 million. I am thrilled to welcome Aaron Rianne. Hey, Aaron, thanks for taking the time out today. Thank you, Toby. It's a pleasure to be here. And the uh, the last name's Ryan. Ryan, sorry, bud. Sorry, I should have That's asked okay. you that before we got you know before you started recording. But listen, so. I know you've you, you've been in the business for a very short amount of time. You've had this meteoric rise from zero to almost 500 transactions or 450. Talk just before we get into that. I do want to get into that. Tell us a little bit about yourself. We want to get to get a feel for who you are, and then we'll get into your business. Sure. Uh, well, born and raised in Portland, Oregon. Uh, you know, been an entrepreneur, owned different businesses, you know, insurance companies, restaurants, financial services companies, um, you know, and just applied a lot of my, you know, basic business skills, you know, to the real estate business. Interesting. Okay. So, so insurance companies, uh, you're a serial entrepreneur. Um, re- I mean, that's, that's wild, man. Insurance to restaurants, financial services, now real estate. It sounds like my yeah. career. Um, <laughs> I mean, what is that? I mean, tell us why is that? I mean, I mean, were you just looking for your thing and you landed on real estate or, you know, you know, okay, listen, if, here's how I view this. So insurance company, you can be a loan guy, just like real estate. Um, sure. Financial service, the same thing. Uh, and that could be, I don't know what that is, but you could sell stocks. I mean, financial services is a, is a big, uh, but then a restaurant's a whole different ball of wax. Yeah. How did that go yeah. for you? So, you know, each, each one of my businesses in, in each field, I mean, you know, my plan, you know, with each of those businesses was always to have an exit strategy. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I, you know, I acquired those businesses, um, built them up, built their sales channels and their marketing channels up and, you know, sold each one of them at, you know, at a profit. And then, uh, you know, while I was involved in those, uh, in those businesses, you know, I had a, a side hobby of, uh, developing and flipping real estate and decided that, you know, when I got to a point after selling, uh, you know, a couple of my businesses, it was either early retirement or, you know, look at the real estate business seriously. And, uh, decided to go with the real estate business. Okay, that's interesting. So the, another interesting thing of what you're doing or you know, being, in, uh, again, a serial entrepreneur like yourself, these are all consumer-facing uh, uh, you know, ventures. Why did you stick with consumer-facing instead of going like a, a more business-to-business route? Well, you know, I, I enjoyed, 
you know, with real estate, you know, one of the things that, that I always enjoyed and, you know, the same thing with insurance to some degree, financial services, and even the restaurant business was, you know, seeing people happy with your product and, and your service. You know, a lot of times when you're doing business to business, you know, you don't necessarily see the, you know, your, your customer satisfaction with your product or your service. And in the, you know, business to, you know, individual business to person sale, you know, you get to see, you know, your client satisfaction and, you know, how much they appreciate and value your service or, or product that you're offering. Got it. Okay, interesting. So so, um, so now you get into real estate. Now, when you thought about, you know, you, you took this hobby of yours and you made it a real thing, did you sure. see uh, – when you, did you see um, – did you see something missing? Did you did you get into this going, hey, I can fix this or I can do a better job, or was it just a passion project for you? You know, I, I did. I, I saw a big hole in the marketplace, and, and, you know, I knew a lot of realtors prior to, you know, becoming one myself, and, and the thing that I always realized about them was, you know, a lot of them were great salespeople, but not a lot of them were good business people. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I found that, you know, my, my thought pattern was always that if you treated real estate like a business, you know, you essentially could run it you know, like, like a business. And, you know, if you did that, you know, there was unlimited opportunity and unlimited potential, you know, if you focused on, um, you know, running it like an actual business rather than a hobby or, you know, just a job. Yeah. Or just a solopreneur. I mean, I see too much of that. I mean, you know, I, I for the most part, it's, it's, it's people like you that, that uh, are very successful because you come into it thinking like a business instead of just, Hey, I'm a, I'm a solopreneur out there, you know, hawking real estate. Now we're recording this in, in uh, November of 2014. You started six years ago in the worst year that you could ever start a real <laughs> estate did. company. I mean, I, I, I mean, so, and for everybody do the math, that's 2008 when the world was melting. Um, yeah. I mean, talk to us a little bit about that. Cause that is the scariest time to be in real estate. Nobody wanted to touch real estate in that way. Sure. I mean, you know, it, it was, uh, it was kind of an interesting time because, you know, the flip market had basically gone away. There were no builders building anymore. I mean, the banks weren't really willing to lend, you know, any more money for flips, building development. And, you know, I, I looked at real estate. I mean, I saw, you know, in my market, there were 40%, 50% of the realtors that I knew, you know, that had signs up all over town were getting out of the business. Yeah. And, um, you know, obviously, you know, one of the things that I looked at was, you know, the competition's going to be decreasing quite a bit in my marketplace. And I found that, you know, if I was able to capitalize and, and be able to get into the market, um, you know, there would be a big opportunity because people still needed realtors in 2008 and 2009, and there were just a lot fewer to choose from in my market. Got it. Okay. Um, now, so did you get into the REO side of stuff? Is that how you started or do you, was it you traditional from the beginning? Traditional from the beginning. You know, my, my thing has always been, I never wanted to ride the wave. So I've never got into, you know, never really did a lot of short sales. Short sales have always been less than 8% of my business. Uh, I never got a lot into new construction. You know, I do, a, I do, you know, a little bit of it, but it's never been the bulk of my business because in uh, good times, new construction does well, but when the economy turns, new construction suffers. Yeah. Um, REO and short sales, when the market is bad, you know, uh, that business thrives, but when the economy starts to get good, you know, that business suffers. So I never, you know, for me, from a business standpoint, never wanted to ride the wave, you know, there, that's not, you know, in my opinion, not a, a great business model because, you know, great my business model is the model of stability, regardless of the market. Right. A, a business independent of, of market conditions. Um, Absolutely. So I want to get into some of the marketing stuff, but but if I look at your 448 transactions, what is the percentage of buy versus sellers? You know, we're about a 60-40 business. 60% uh, of them are, you know, sellers and 40% are, are buyers. Okay. Um, so what, what kind of marketing did you, I mean, to, you know, looking for that needle in the haystack in 08, the person who, you know, wasn't underwater, um, mm -hmm. I mean, what, what did your marketing efforts look like, you know, considering you are a business guy? Yeah. So, you know, in, in 2008, I mean, it was, it was tough to find equity sellers, you know, a lot of it was, 
um, looking for people who didn't purchase their home between the years of basically 2004 and 2008. Um, so that was my first target, you know, when I, I started geographically farming uh, different neighborhoods and different areas of more established, you know, buyers and, and, and that kind of thing. And, you know, those kinds of lists can, you know, simply be pulled from a title company. Um, so doing that and then, uh, you know, when I first started, I mean, it was a lot of, you know, meet and greet buyers, you know, uh, really getting, get in front of open houses and, um, you know, work as many of those as you possibly can, because, you know, when the economy is down, buyers still want to buy. And, you know, it was, uh, that was, that was definitely my market was trying to target equity sellers and trying to work with, uh, with buyers through open houses and, and different channels like that. So, so with, you know, considering that you had, you know, four other consumer facing uh, companies, did you come into this with a giant list? You know, I didn't. Wow. Actually, I, I didn't, you know, because I mean, I'm just like anybody else in 2008, 2009, not a lot of my friends and family were wanting to buy real estate. So, I mean, my very first year, I didn't sell a house for anybody I knew, you know, and I think my very first year I sold 42 homes. Wow. With the uh, number of homes. Yeah. I mean, not bad. I got my license, uh, you know, that first year, you know, by the time I, I think I got my license in January and by you know, the end of December that year, I'd sold, you know, 42 houses in a pretty bad market. Um, not bad for a first year agent, no, that's but great. definitely, yeah, definitely not where I wanted to be, but, um, yeah. So, I mean, that was, that was kind of my first year. So, so you had high hopes for yourself or, or, you know, um, cause a lot of people I think would come in if they, if they sold 42 their first year, they you know, especially in that kind of environment, they would think they're a rock star and, you know, you, you always had not 42, but 442 in, in your mind. You know, I, I mean, I think that in my mind, I mean, I have a lot more than 442, so I'm not done yet. But, uh, uh, you know, I, I definitely knew that my business model wasn't going to be built around selling, you know, 40, 50, 60, even 100 homes a year. So, yeah, that, that assumption is correct. Okay. So, so um, again, I want to I talk about where you want to go and how you're going to get there. If I go back to, to 2008, you, 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 know, you, you could go to a title company and say, hey, listen, I want people who bought their house pre-2001, for example. So yeah. you get this list. What would you do? What, what, what's next? Mailers? Yeah. So, you know, I would do mailers, door hangers, door knock, anything I could possibly do to get in front of that client, you know, and, and uh, you know, my, my sales philosophy has always been, you know, I'm kind of old school in the fact that nothing replaces a conversation or a handshake, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, you can mail to them all you want. You can, you know, buy the latest and greatest internet widget, um, but nothing is going to replace that FaceTime and that handshake. So, you know, you can send somebody a hundred emails, but if I get a meeting, a uh, face-to-face meeting, I'm more than likely going to be, you know, taking that client because of, uh, you know, that personal relationship that I develop with them. So someone like you, Aaron, you know, you're, you're a smart guy. Again, you're a serial entrepreneur. Did you, I mean, did you get a coach early on or is it just, you know, I didn't, I didn't have a real estate coach. My first, uh, I think my first three years in the business, I didn't have a real estate coach, believe it or not. Um, you know, I just kind of figured it out as I went. I mean, my training in the real estate business was, I mean, I remember I got sat in a room, you know, with, with one other person with an office that was about, uh, you know, maybe 15 square feet. And, you know, there was a desk with a telephone on it and I was wished the best of luck. And, you know, hopefully I can sell a house my first month. Right. Yeah. I mean, it's like that. Um, uh, so, so again, you get sat down and said, Hey, good luck. Here's a telephone. Um, where did you pull from? I mean, in terms of, did you have to just, w was getting customers pretty easy for you? Cause you've done it so many times before. You know, I, I think I, I may have had a little bit of, well, I shouldn't say may. I mean, I did. I had an advantage because I was always used to, you know, conducting business in a professional setting with people. But, you know, the thing for me was, you know, that, especially that first year was, I mean, I went to the top agents in my office and just kind of watched what they did. And for as basic of, um, you know, a plan as they had, I mean, you know, I sat down and said, you know, what, is, what are the things that, you know, I think there were maybe five or six top producers in that office at that time. And I, I went to each one of them and took little bits and pieces of what they did on a, on a daily basis and tried to implement it into my routine and my schedule and my business plan. And, you know, that's kind of how I was able to, you know, 
figure it out my first year, I guess, you know, my first year or two. Sure. And, and you did some of that. So you did some of that basic stuff, door knocking and mailers. Was there anything that, that, you know, back in that time as well as today in terms of marketing that you did, I mean, what are some of the unique things that, that you figured out either then or along the way in terms of marketing? Well, I, I think that, you know, having a, a unique selling proposition is, you know, is, is key, you know, um, and you can learn about those, I mean, through all kinds of different programs, but, you know, having some kind of a, you know, something that sets you apart, you know, that was, that was the biggest thing for, you know, for a new agent in, in the business, whether that's, Hey, I'm going to answer my phone 24 hours right. a day or, you know, I mean, whatever, whatever your value proposition is and you got to stand behind it and sell it well. Um, so, I mean, that was, that was probably the, the biggest thing. I mean, I really, you know, my first year was able to brand myself as a local guy who was ex- extremely familiar with the certain territory that I worked and, you know, that worked well for me that first year, you know, people would call me and, and talk to me about, uh, their neighborhood, the movement in that neighborhood and kind of what the market was doing because everybody was scared. You know, nobody knew what was going on with home values, you know, the projection of home values, you know, how much equity did they, you know, did they see themselves losing? So I got a lot of phone calls just kind of out of fear of the market. And, you know, I answered those, I added them to my database, you know, I mean, think, goodness, I was, you know, I, I, I figured that out early was, you know, add them to your database, even though they're not going to buy now, they may buy later. And, you know, I mean, even this week, you know, I mean, I, I had a, um, you know, a call yesterday on Sunday from somebody that during that first year, I put them on my mailing list, my email list, my call list, and, you know, I market to them, you know, religiously. And uh, they called me and said, you know, hey, we're getting ready to sell our house. You know, what do you think? Can you, can you maybe come by this week? So, um, you know, building a strong database of people that you meet, you know, is, is definitely crucial. Oh, it's crucial. And it's, it's, I mean, and it's so basic, but there's a lot of people out there that, that have been in the business for, you know, two to seven years that still don't focus on a, a database. It's, it's crazy to me. Yeah. You know, it, here's in real estate. It's funny. I mean, the, one of the reasons why I do this show is that real estate is in a lot of ways stuck in the seventies or eighties, right? Yeah. Listings have come online, but other than that, you know, it hasn't changed much. Why do you think is something like real estate and something so basic as building your database, why is that not, I mean, why do people miss that? Why don't, I'm just going to leave that, well, that like that and see what you where you go. I, I think that, you know, really it, it comes down to the quality of the agents that are out there in, in the marketplace. You know, it comes back down to the fact that, you know, if you really look at it, real estate has one of the lowest costs, you know, yeah. uh, of entry of any business out there. And a lot of the people who are involved in our business just, you know, they're not great business people. You know, they might have some sales skills or, you know, they might do this part time or, or, you know, whatever the case. And they just, you know, they don't have a good business background. They don't have, you know, a, a set game plan. And, you know, our business is all about having a game plan, sticking to it and, and execution. Yeah. So having, I'm just writing that down, game plan and execution. So, so for you, Ryan, sorry, I was looking at your last name, Aaron, what, sure. what do you know now that you wish you would have known when you started? Oh, well, I think that the things that I would have, um, you know, I, I think that, you know, obviously everybody has to go through that trial of, you know, learning the business and understanding the business, which, you know, I did my first year, uh, two years. I mean, don't get me wrong. I still learn, you know, every day, you know, to this day. Um, but the things that, you know, I really wish that I would have focused on was, um, you know, from day one was understanding that, you know, regardless of, uh, regardless of market, you know, there's always buyers and sellers out there. Right. You know, you don't want to listen to, um, you know, a lot of the, uh, you know, I call them negative Nellies in, in the office that, you know, think that the world's coming to an end, you know, you got to shut those people out. Um, you know, one of the, the key things that I did early on was even when I was affiliated with a large national brokerage, you know, I always had my own office off site uh, that I came to every day and mm. ran my team and ran my schedule, you know, out of. Um, so that I could control the environment and, you know, control what was, you know, kind of what the, um, you know, what the culture was in that office. Um, so, you know, that, that's probably the thing that I would have wished I would have learned, you know, early on. Um, you know, one of my, one of my basic business philosophies, and, and I share it with my team every single day is, you know, I spend 90% of my time lead generating. 
you know, I'm in the lead generation business. Uh, real estate just happens to be the product that I sell, but, right. um, you know, him, you know, the, the person with the most buyers and sellers at the end of the day is the one who wins. And it's the same thing. Once you get a listing, you know, now you're spending 90% of your time generating, you know, buyers for that property. You know, if you can focus on that, um, you know, you'll, you'll have an advantage in your marketplace. Got it. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I, I love that you're, you're in the lead generation business. Um, you're in retail with, but your product just happens to be homes. That's exactly it. And I, you know, you know, one thing I, 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 I heard this two weeks ago at a conference and, um, and it's so simple. It's like when you meet someone who owns a home at the end of the day, there's 100% chance that that person is going to sell at some point, you know, whether that's 30 years down the road when they die or, or, or three months from now. Um, that's why I think it's so important to, to, to build that database. So, so if you're in the lead generation business, that's 90% of where your energy goes. W what does that look like for you? I mean, what, what, I mean, that's, you can either answer that with what, how's your day structured as well as like, what are the arms that you go out to, to, to generate those leads? Yeah, well, it's changed now, you know, now that I have a, you know, an established, well-known business in my marketplace, I mean, that's changed quite a bit, you know, um, early on, it was a lot of prospecting. It was a lot of, you know, direct mail. I mean, shoot, when I first got in the business, I designed my own direct mail. I labeled my own direct mail. I took it to the post office for bulk mailing. So, um, you know, I mean, it's changed over the years. So it just depends on, you know, if I, if I'm trying to relate this to, you know, the average agent out there where you're at in your business, right? So if you're still actively working in your business every day, generating leads, you know, it might be, you know, your first two hours of your day are spent on the phone prospecting, trying to find buyers or sellers to work with, calling through your database, following up. Um, maybe you call FISBOs and expireds and, you know, you're, you're trying to do that route. Um, you know, so it just, it just depends, you know, that's one of those questions that, you know, I wish I had a magical answer for every agent out there, but, uh, you know, it just, it really depends on where you're at in your business. Okay. Well, and so, so talking about where you're at, right, 448, yeah. um, what's, what's on deck for your future? I'm sorry, Toby, you cut out there. Oh, sorry, bud. Sorry. Um, where do you want to get to, right? You're, you've, you, this year, you'll end up with about 450 deals. You're, yep. not, you're not done yet. Where do you see yourself two years from now, and how are you going to get there? Well, I, I think that, you know, for us, it's going to take – a lot more growth into into different marketplaces. Um, you know, I, I'm looking at opening um, offices, you know, up and down the West Coast. So we're looking to expand into the California market, hmm. um, specifically San Diego. Um, That's where we're I'm looking. At. Oh, it's okay, yeah. great. Um, I spent a lot of time down in that Del Mar, La Jolla area. Sure. So, um, you know, we're looking at expanding into that local marketplace up there. We're looking to expand into the Seattle marketplace. Uh, so just north of us, about four hours, um, you know, and, and really, you know, that's how, you know, we're going to grow in the next phases of our business. And, you know, our goal is in the next two years to go from, you know, almost 500 transactions to, you know, the next big milestone for us is going to be a thousand. Right. Um, it's so funny, uh, that, that, that number, that 1000 mark is, is, uh, you know, <clears throat> Bob Corcoran, I don't know if you know who Bob Corcoran is, but I do. Yeah. So, so I'm friends with Bob and I asked him, I said, Hey Bob, do you know anybody that's gone over the, the, you know, hit that 1000? And he said, no, Toby, I don't. And he's been doing this for you know 25 years. And uh, literally the next week I came in and I, and I asked that question that, that I asked you team transactions. My first guy was a guy, Ryan O'Neill in, um, Oh, I don't know where he's at. Uh, and he says, uh, la this year we'll do 1,300. And last year we did 1,220. I'm like, holy smokes. Um, and he does that with a team of 20, 22. Um, and you're, you're at 21 right now. Um, yeah. In terms of, you know, earlier you said you have to know, your, you have to have a unique selling proposition. Mm -hmm. Yours at the time was being the guy with local knowledge. As you've grown, and as you've grown your team, has that USP changed for you? Yeah, I mean, you know, for us, I mean, we're the number one real estate team, uh, you know, in our marketplace. And, you know, we sell more homes than anyone. And that's, you know, that's been what, you know, a lot of people, you know, have known us for. You know, we use, I use a lot of statistical information. So I use the fact that, you know, I mean, I sell, 
you know, almost 450 homes, you know, average days on market, you know, that kind of stuff. You know, I, I use that as, you know, part of my marketing because now that I've grown and, and, you know, maintained an established business, you know, we have that, you know, those, those high powered statistics behind us that we can share with a, you know, buyer or seller. Yeah. So, so, Aaron, do you think you've you've kind of figured it out in a way that that you have this business in a box and you can just transport it to Seattle and San Diego and be successful? You know, that's that's the key uh, with any good business is having a duplicatable and repeatable system that you can implement. You know, if you were to you know put yourself in the middle of a, a market where you've never been, you don't know anybody, you know, being able to start that business up and, and, you know, sell homes right off the bat. And, you know, that's one of the things that we've really focused on is having the systems and the infrastructure to where, you know, it's ran again, Toby, like a business. Yeah. So, you know, if we go into a different marketplace, it's, you know, we have our set game plan. We have our, our checks and balances that we go into that marketplace, we set up and, you know, we know everything we need to do, you know, learning from experience again, right? You know what to do and what not to do so that you can go into that local marketplace and dominate. Well, so, so, I mean, talk to us a little bit about those, you know, what systems you have in place and what does that infrastructure look like? Sure. Um, you know, what we have is, you know, we know right off the bat, you know, where our marketing dollars are best spent. We know, um, you know, what staff you need, you know, based on the level of transactions from transaction coordination to listing coordination to runners to, um, you know, whatever else you have, you know, on your team. Um, you know, you know, you know, we know, I know exactly the, the footprint of my, you know, my office space that I need to lease in a new hmm. market, um, you know, based on the way that I had it set up. So just like a McDonald's would do, right? Yeah. Going into opening a new location, you know, I have the same set game plan going into a new marketplace that, you know what, I need this size of an office. You know, this is generally where, you know, we like to set our offices up. You know, we like to set ours up in professional uh, high-rise buildings, um, you know, these are the, the staff that we need. These are the salespeople that we need. These are the, you know, databases that we need. This is, um, you know, the CRM system that we need. So, you know, we just, we have all that stuff down to, you know, kind of what works for our business. So, so when you say, you, you know, how to best deploy your capital, um, how, yeah. how are you deploying your capital for, to, to generate a, you know, 60% of your business being sellers? Yeah. So the best use of our capital is, or the best use of our time and, and capital is investing in, you know, a, a prospecting business. You know, it goes back again to what we talked about earlier is nothing beats human touch. So, um, you know, investing a lot in, um, you know, the, the lead generation of, of prospecting. And, you know, that's been one of the biggest pillars to our business is, you know, we're just really good prospectors. So getting your agents, you know, your staff every single day, to prospect to find new buyers and sellers. That's going to be your highest ROI, you know, by anything else that you do, direct mail, um, TV, radio, uh, you know, any of that stuff. Right, right, right. Um, yeah, and look, and it all comes back, you know, there's no there's no silver bullet. It's it's pro work, uh, prospecting is work. You have to go and do it. Um, now, do you do TV and radio? I do. You do? Are you, are you, a, do. Are you a rate guy? I'm not. Got it. Okay. Um, we, we should talk, I would love to learn uh, offline. Let's talk about it. Cause that's part of what we do here. Um, now, so let's say that you go into, so your average, uh, um, again, I, I want to talk about parachuting into a new market. You're in Portland, average sale is 230,000. Um, I imagine a Seattle is probably something similar, but when you go into a market like San Diego, it's very, very different. When you think about going into to a new market and and taking your McDonald's, you know, McDonaldizing uh, a real estate business, how important do you think it is to sort of look at, you know, have an environment similar to to what you are seeing in Portland? You know, I, I think that, you know, we've gone into, you know, certain communities here in our local marketplace where we've targeted, you know, higher end, buy, you know, buyers and sellers. We do a lot of that business. We do a lot of lower end business. We do a lot of mid-range business. Um, so I, I think that, you know, obviously, um, you know, when you go into a new market, I mean, understanding, you know, researching what other top producers are doing, um, you know, in those marketplaces, which I've done, you know, I'm in the lowest, um, um, you know, I'm in the lowest 
purchase price market, major market, you know, on the West Coast, you know, Portland, Seattle's, you know, almost double, San Diego's almost triple, you know, so I mean, average median home price. So I'm in the lowest of, of, you know, of the West Coast. So, um, you know, I, I think that, you know, you need to adjust for, you know, the local conditions because every market has their own rules and regulations. But, you know, for the most part, you know, it, it like you said earlier, I mean, it, it goes back, it gets back down to, you know, prospecting, FaceTime and, and getting meetings and having more buyers and sellers to talk to than, you know, the realtor next door. Yeah. So, so for you, do you have a niche? Are, are you, are, are you just, uh, I mean, um, yeah, I mean, did you have any kind of a niche? And and if you came to a San Diego, you know, would you niche down into into you know beachfront property or equestrian property? You know, <laughs> that's funny. That's that's a good question. I get asked that all the time. And you know, I'm a businessman. I go where the business is, right? So I'll go into any market, you know, any any part of town, you know, as long as it's a a good you know, use of my time, you know, if it's a property that I know I can sell and, you know, a client that I know is motivated, then I'm going there. So I've never, you know, I've never kind of pigeon my pigeonholed myself into a niche. I've mm-hmm. always stayed pretty wide open and, you know, it's, it's worked well for me. Interesting. So if you came to a San Diego or a Seattle, whatever, mm-hmm. what would you do? I mean, I want to talk a little bit about recruiting. I mean, what, what are the steps that you would take to, cause I get this all the time, right? Hey, I you know, I want to be like Aaron, but I don't know how to find these people. What would you do? And how would you go about recruiting the right staff for your offices? Sure. Well, I think that, you know, obviously, you know, we use the, um, you know, we, use, you know, to start off, right. I mean, it's about finding, you know, top quality people, you know, in, in the organization, because, you know, that's one of the things that, you know, I've focused on pretty heavily over the last 24 months, I would say, Toby, is, you know, I want to find the, the best people possible and place them in my organization, right? Mm-hmm. So, you know, for me, it's always been, you know, even if I don't have a spot available, if I have talent and I see talent, you know, I'll make a spot for them. Yeah. Um, you know, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm a, lead generator slash talent agent, you know, and, and, you know, going into a new marketplace. I mean, it's, you know, again, it's just being able to find who, you know, the top people are for your organization. So rather that's reaching out to them, you know, and then, you know, trying again, just to, to get in front of them, to talk to them about, you know, what your value proposition is of your organization or, um, you know, placing ads to, to find, you know, good quality salespeople, um, you know, getting them through things like a, a disc assessment, which I highly recommend, you know, making sure that you utilize, you know, personality profile and, and, you know, make sure you check references. And, um, you know, I mean, that's, that's really been kind of the key for us. I mean, that's how we built our organization up here in Portland was, you know, we never stopped prospecting for business and we never stopped prospecting for talent. So we're, always looking whether that's you know through craigslist through career builder through monster through um you know whatever job board or you know title companies are a great source for referrals for uh agents and staff so you know we always tie into those pretty heavily and we're always interviewing and meeting new people and you know seeing who could be a you know an added value to our organization yeah yeah i love it so so in terms of the disc profile where are you what are you what do you look like i'm a high d High D. I'm uh, and high D. What about what about I? I'm uh, that's my secondary trait is I and I. I I'm, so I'm a D I. I'm 99 D 99 I and 30, okay. 34 S and 34 C. So when you put you know so you meet somebody you're like hey I like this guy because you know somebody can be a really really high I right he's mm-hmm. really gregarious you like this person yeah what do you look for? Well, it depends on the the job, right? It depends on the position that you're recruiting for. So, you know, I'll give you an example. I mean, a buyer's agent, I always look for a high eye. You know, I want somebody who's a great relationship person. Somebody who's got a lot of personality and, you know, they want to be, you know, the person that works with somebody for, you know, three months, four months, you know, as to where guys like me and you, you know, for high D, you know, we want to close that person on the spot and move on to the next one. Right. So it depends on the position that I'm filling for. So, you know, listing specialists, you know, you want a D, you know, buyer specialist, I want an I, you know, staff, it's going to be an S or a C. So it just depends on what I'm, what I'm looking for. Okay. No, that's great. I mean, that's what, I mean, you just outlined it perfectly for everybody. Um, so, Okay, so you, you meet these people and uh, they, they, you know, you, you, they have the right profile for the job that you're thinking of. 
what what is your value prop? Where would you again? If somebody wants to try to you know be like Aaron, um, you know, when you say, "Hey, come on to my team," it's it's going to be one of three things, or maybe a combination, right? It's going to be, "Hey, I'm going to give you leads," or "Hey, I'm going to give you a, a ton of training and I'm going to build you up," or or I'm going to give you more attractive splits. What is your value proposition in, in those in that regard? Yeah, so I'm going to show you how to sell three to four times more real estate than you're selling today, guaranteed. Com- yeah, that's, that's compelling. I mean, so so, and and does this come back down to just again prospecting and hard work, and, and that there is no silver you know, bullet? I'm going to get them in front of more people than they've ever seen before. You know, and they're going to have more clients working, you know, with our team and our organization than they've ever seen. And, you know, it's, it's never failed us once. I mean, people come to work here, they see more clients, they have more opportunities to close sales. And, you know, they learn that real estate is a career, you know, it's not a hobby. And they get, you know, they learn the basic business skills that it takes to, you know, be a business person in the real estate industry. And, you know, we put them on a schedule, we show them, you know, what they need to do to be successful mm. and we ensure that they're going to be in front of more clients than, than anybody else. Now earlier you talked about culture and culture for for you know attracting a new talent and and retention of that talent is is really really key. What does your culture look like in, in your office? Is it fun? Is it is it all about, you know, learning based? Yeah, I mean I, I think that it's got to have a combination of different things, right? It's got to be a professional environment. Um, you know, it's, it's a fun environment. I mean, you know, you want people who are going to fit together and and work well together. Um, you know, everybody's got to be a learning based person because the minute you think you know it all, that's when, you know, you run into problems and you can't grow any further. Um, so, you know, it's, it's having a hybrid, you know, we've kind of developed a culture where everybody's there to support everybody else. I mean, everybody understands they look forward to, you know, our Monday morning meetings because there's education as well as company updates, you know, uh, in those meetings, um, you know, and everybody who's excited about growth, you know, because that's what we are. We're a high growth company and, you know, you got to get buy-in from everybody. You know, you're not going to go from 448 deals to a thousand by yourself, right? right. You got to have everybody on the same page and everybody bought into, you know, your vision and what you see happening with your organization if you want to be successful. Right. Right. I totally agree. Um, so when you look for talent, Aaron, is it, do you, uh, and I'm just, look, you've, you've done this a million times in terms of, you know, finding somebody, bringing them on for you, what has worked best getting the brand new agent so you can mold them or somebody that's got, you know, somebody has been in it for a few years or, or somebody that's really seasoned where, where have you found don't, success? You know, don't focus on their, uh, their background. Don't focus on their, you know, experience level as it you know, relates to real estate. Take that out of the equation. You know, look at their track record in any industry, whether it's real estate, insurance, financial services, you know, I mean, whatever it is. You know, look at their track record of success in other industries mm. and focus on their personality and what value they can bring as, you know, a person and an employee to your organization. Because my thing is, you know, my, my you know, kind of my theory has always been, you know, I can teach you how to sell real estate better than anybody else, but I can't teach you how to be a hard worker. Right. I can't teach you how to show up every day and, and do the things that you're supposed to be doing. Right. Yeah. You know, with, with, and just for you, you know, look, I'm going to, this is going to be kind of a long one. So stick with me here. Real estate, selling real estate or being sales in general, but you know, it's a, it's a business of rejection, right? You hear no all the time. How did you, you started again in the worst time in the history of mankind to sell real estate. How did you stay upbeat and positive? And, and do you ever feel like that? You know, feel like, you know, have days where you feel like you got kicked in the gut and you're like, I can't do this today or this week. Sure. I, everybody has those days. I mean, I'd be lying to you if I told you I didn't have days where, you know, I just, uh, <laughs> I didn't feel like, uh, I got beat up a little bit, you know, in those days, I mean, you know, I'll keep it in perspective. Right. Um, you know, on those days, typically I call it a day. I go home, Got it. you know, and I, I spend time with my family and, you know, go to the gym and, you know, spend time doing things that I like to do. You know, I mean, that's, it's pretty simple. You yeah. know, if you're gay, if you're negative and you're, you're in a negative mindset, don't stay there and keep doing the same thing, you know, leave for a few hours and get yourself, you know, refreshed and go back tomorrow and do it over again. Right. Um, you know, early on, I mean, you know, I, I had to re- 
but it, all I need, you know, is one person to say yes to me. You know, it's kind of like the open house thing, right? When I first started, I'd do four open houses a weekend. Hmm. And my goal wasn't necessarily to sell those homes. My goal wasn't, you know, to, to get that property sold, you know, by the end of the day, because I was holding other agents open houses. My goal was to pick up one buyer that wanted to buy in the next 30 days. And if I did that every single weekend, you know, I, I mean, again, right, it goes back to my simple math. If I sold, if I picked up one buyer every single weekend, that was four transactions a month, it would equate to 48 transactions that first year. And that was my mindset and my goal was, I don't need everybody to say yes to me, I just need one person to say yes to me. Right. I can reach my goal without one person saying yes. Right, and that's the number, look, that's the number you almost hit, right, you, uh, you've exactly. hit 42. Um, That's exactly it. God, I love that. Uh, so, so um, we got to start. We have to start wrapping up here. But uh, you know, again, guys like you, Aaron, I'm fascinated with because you've built this great business. But but you're, th- there's no complacency in you. Not only do you want to get to a thousand transactions in this office, you want to go out and conquer the West Coast. I mean, are you just a, like a? Have you always been a competitor, or what is that? You know, I'm a very competitive guy. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a very, very competitive guy. I mean, I had a, you know, sports background. I played sports and, you know, I, the only thing I can equate it to is if you've ever watched Kobe Bryant on the court, you know, and his, uh, his tenacity and his, uh, you know, his aggressiveness, you know, I, I think that I have that same kind of aggressiveness and tenacity and, you know, in the business world. Got it. You know, and again, that's something you can't teach that, that hustle, right? That tenacity, that's, that's something you either have or you don't. That's exactly it. So, so for you, again, you have all these goals. You know, I want to get to a thousand transactions. I want an office in San Diego and Seattle. How do you keep your day from not your day or week or month from spiraling out of control? How, how do you kind sure. of, yeah, how do you do that? You know, that's, that's a good question because a lot of things come at you, you know, on different days and my, you know, my basics, right? If it's not on my schedule, it doesn't exist. It. I know what my schedule looks like for the day. I stick to my schedule. And if you're not on my schedule for that day, then you can, you know, get on my schedule for later that week. And that will keep you organized and on track. And no matter how many things you got coming at you, you know, if it's not on your schedule, you know, it doesn't happen that day. Yeah. No, I'm the same way. I live out of my calendar. So, so again, for you, if you teach, uh, you know, prospecting and 90% of your day is prospecting, how do you, how do you think about, uh, you know, social media and how do you think about sites like, you know, Zillow and Trulia? How do you, do you use them or what's your thoughts around that? You know, I don't use uh, Zillow and Trulia, you know, I mean, of course my, my listings feed in there. I don't use it. You know, I don't pay to advert, you know, pay to get the leads from there. You know, um, I, I don't know. I, I've never been a big Zillow, truly, uh, you know, social media guy. I mean, again, you know, you can only do so many things during the day. Right. Yeah. So I found that, you know, if I stick to the, you know, the main pillars of my business and I get very, very good at those, um, you know, that's, that's what I need to focus my time on because I only have, you know, I only have 24 hours in a day, just like you and just like anybody else that's listening. Um, you know, so what I focus on and what I spend my time doing, I need to, I need to master and be the best at. And right. unfortunately things like the Zillow, the Trulia, the social media, um, you know, are just things that I've, you know, I haven't implemented into my, my arsenal. Right. And look, you know, that same 24 hours, we, we all have the same 24 hours that Mark Cuban has or that that's Bill right. Gates had or Steve Jobs had. And it's just, you know, if you look at what those people have done and if you look at what you have done and then people in the audience are going, man, I, I want to get there. And I think that's such a, it's, it, again, so basic. We all have the same 24 hours. Focus on how to use them appropriately. Uh, I'm going to ask you kind of a crazy question that I, that I don't ask everybody. But again, I, I, I think guys like you are fascinating. What is something I didn't ask you, but I should have asked you? The question that you should have asked me that, huh, that's, that's a good question. You should have asked me if I'll coach you how to sell real estate. Yeah. Well, answer that, please. You know, we are, uh, we are in the process of, you know, looking at setting up a, a small, close group of, uh, of coaching clients. Um, you know, that want to do exactly what we've done, you know, which is set up a repeatable and duplicatable business. And, um, you know, I get a lot of calls and a lot of inquiries from different agents and different people throughout the country asking me all the time, um, you know, if we, if I will mentor them or if I will, um, you know, help them in the business. And, you know, there's definitely, 
definitely uh, a need for, you know, for, you know, for this, uh, this service. And, you know, we're looking at over the next 60 days, forming a group of, you know, a maximum of 12 to, you know, 10 to 12 people to begin, you know, coaching and, and mentoring to help get to, um, you know, this level of success. Yeah. That, um, so I'll tell you what, I mean, I'm sure, you, I, mean, you, I mean, you have a team, I'm sure you coach those people, but in terms of coaching, I mean, I, I coach a few people just because I can have the show and people ask me about it all the time. Sometimes I get frustrated with coaching because I have some people where they just want me to tell them, like create lists for them, like tell me what to do. And, and then, you know, over the course of working with them for a month or six weeks, all we have is this giant list and the, the, it's the execution that they need to go do that they just don't do. And those people I drop. Um, ha- have you experienced that or what's your philosophy around coaching someone? You know, I found that, you know, the reason people don't implement things is because they can't stay focused, right? So, you know, as a coach, I mean, you give people, you know, a multitude of things. Like you, you asked me about Zillow and Trulia and social media and all these things. And, you know, every agent that walks through my door, I mean, you know, they ask me the same thing as, you know, what should we, you know, how, how I should be doing all these things. And, and the truth is you shouldn't be doing all those things. You should be focusing on, you know, one thing at a time, mastering that and having accountability for, um, you know, the task at hand. So, you know, for me, what I found, you know, especially in talking to agents is that they're trying to do too many things. They're not doing anything efficiently and yep. they need to focus on, you know, building solid pillars of business rather than having a bunch of stuff that they're not very good at. I agree. So uh, I'm going to finish up. We're going to finish up with the same last two questions I ask everybody. And, and the first one is this. I'm an aspiring agent. I have 25 bucks. What book should I go buy today? Ooh, which book should you go buy today? Um, Mastering the Rockefeller Habits. Whoa. That's, I never. What? Who did that? I'm going to look that up right now. Uh, Vern Harnish. And what's that? Mastering the Rockefeller Habits. What's that about? You know, he's the the growth guru, you know. Um, He's a columnist for Fortune.com. I mean, he just, you know, kind of reminds you of the things that you should be doing, um, you know, to to grow your business and then stay on task and to, you know, things that you can do to increase the value, you know, of your, of your growing company. So, I mean, great book, great read. I recommend anybody out there, if you haven't read Mastering the Rockefeller Habits, you get the book, read it, and it'll be a game changer for you. Well, I'm going to get it today. Um, I'm, I can get it, uh, I can get it, I can get it on eBay for a buck. Um, and listen, if, if everybody, if you want to get a free copy of Mastering the Rockefeller Habits by Vern Harnish, just use our link. It's audibletrial.com slash superagentslive. So go, go get that today. Um, for you, Aaron, do you think that – what personal habits do you have that have, has contributed to your success? Oh, well, I mean I think that staying on a schedule, okay. number one. Don't deviate from that schedule daily. Know what, you know, have a set game plan every single day. You know, that's, that's a habit that I have is that, you know, I, I'm religious about knowing what I'm going to do for the day. Um, hard work. I mean, you know, I get up early. I get up at 4 a.m., 4.30 a.m., 5 a.m. every single day. Yeah, Go to the me. gym, get a good workout in, get into the office and, you know, start my day. So, um, you know, getting a routine down, you know, so you know what to expect in your day. Um, you know, that's, that's, you know, those are, those are some of the basics, you know, that I'd recommend for people. Got it. I love it. Okay. So, um, I'm sure when people hear this, they're going to, they're, they're going to do one of three things. Either one, they're going to want to reach out and say, thank you, which I'm going to say, thank you for coming on the show right now. Or two, they're going to say, Hey, I would love to get coached by Aaron or three. They're going to say, I want to join that guy's team when he gets to San Diego or Seattle or even in Portland, where t- sure. tell everybody where they can find you, where, you know, where, where can they reach out and say hello? Sure. Uh, they can find us on the web at the Ryan group.com. And my name is spelled kind of differently. It's R I a N the Ryan group.com. They can call my office, uh, and schedule an appointment to speak to me at five zero three three four three sixteen sixty six, or they can shoot me an email at Aaron at the Ryan group.com. Awesome. Hey man, thanks for coming on the show and uh, we're going to end it here and, but let's keep in touch. I want to talk about what you're doing with radio. Sounds great. See you bud. All right guys. Have a great day. You too. Let's go. 